So this is your winning book. The 100 mile an hour dog got more votes than the boy who grew dragons. So this is the one we're carrying on with today. And I'm going to continue with chapter two. I watched this film about a tank battle once. There were all these invincible armour plated tanks. They were even bazooka proof. The heroes were losing, of course, until Colonel Cleverclogs, I forget his real name, came up with this brilliant plan. We must use the tank's own strength against itself, he said. If it's impossible for a shell to get through all that armour plate, it must be impossible for a shell to get out. We shall blow them up from the inside. And that's exactly what they did. Brilliant film. Dad didn't like it, of course. He doesn't like noisy action films with lots of explosions. He prefers watching golf. But have you ever seen an exciting golf match? I reckon golf would be a lot more fun if there were a couple of tanks playing and a few explosions. It would be quite interesting to see a nice big tank rumble across the green, square up on the tee, lift its powerful barrel and shoot golf balls right across the golf course. So what has all this got to do with Streaker? Well, I spent ages trying to work out the best way of dealing with the dog. I asked myself, what does Streaker do best? There were several answers to this. One, make a pig of herself. Two, dig huge holes in the lawn. Three, smell. But I reckoned that the one thing she really shone at was speed. Streaker was a rocket on four legs. Maybe I could use her fantastic speed to my own ends. And that was when I remembered my roller skates. I hadn't used them for months. I hadn't seen them for months. All I had to do was hang on to Streaker's lead and that way she would get exercise and I'd get a free ride. You've got to admit it was a pretty jammy idea. Mum and Dad didn't think much of it though. Mum sat at the lunch table in silence eating her 99% fat-free yoghurt that tasted like washing up water. She obviously wasn't impressed. She didn't think much of the yoghurt either. I know your clever ideas, Trevor, she said, said Dad. They never work. Yes, they do, I protested. Look what happened when you tried to build an assault course in your... Parents have this amazing way of bringing your most spectacular failures into general conversation, don't they? I could feel myself turning bright red. That wasn't my fault. I didn't know that fixing a squiddly bit of rope to the ceiling would bring all the plaster down. Dad grunted and Mum pushed the remains of her yoghurt across the table. Would you like to finish it for me? she asked. Why do you keep trying to poison me? I wanted to know. Mum gave me a wan smile and chewed the end of a celery stick. I was determined to prove them wrong. I launched a major expeditionary search into the bowels of my wardrobe and eventually managed to find both roller skates. I spun the wheels and they gave off a very satisfying whoosh. How could this plan fail? I kept Streaker tied to the gatepost while I pulled on my skate, put on my skates. Then I carefully unwound the lead from the gate, wrapped it round one wrist and crouched low behind her. OK, Streaker, lift off. She hardly needed any encouragement. Her front paws churned away, just like they do in cartoons, and we were off, with Streaker's ears streaming out behind her like jet trails. I was amazed by her strength and speed. Even pulling me didn't prevent her from quickly reaching something that felt like Mac 1. Her legs pounded the pavement and she barked happily as we flew along. She loved it. I simply held on to the lead and felt the wind racing through my hair. We skidded round the corner in great style and Streaker headed up the main road towards the street market. I reckoned it was time to slow down a bit, but of course I didn't have any brakes and neither did the dog. Anyhow, by this time Streaker had switched to turbo boost and there was no stopping her. We hit the market at maximum speed, scattering shoppers in every direction. I held on for dear life as we zigzagged through the startled crowd, careering wildly from one side to the other. It was all I could do to stay upright. Streaker suddenly swerved violently to one side to avoid a mesmerised old lady. I had to fling out one arm as a counterbalance and somehow I managed to get her handbag stuck on it. Help! I've been robbed! Stop that boy! He's taken my bag! In no time at all, the whole market seemed to be after me, but there was no way I could stop and explain. Streaker was really enjoying herself. There's nothing she likes more than a good chase. 
she doesn't even care if she's chasing or being chased we went screaming round corners so fast that my skates started to smoke we lurched into stalls sending them tumbling over and spilling their contents every which way crashed into people and bounced off them and all the time the crowd behind was getting bigger and bigger and noisier and noisier stop that boy he's stolen an old bag's lady I, I mean an old lady's bag get the bag snatcher streaker whizzed round the next corner so fast that she rolled over and over and of course i just carried straight on and smashed headlong into a rack of dresses before i knew it i was hauled to my feet by a very angry mob not only was i still clutching the old lady's handbag but i had a rather stunning flower print sundress draped fetchingly over one shoulder to cut a long story short i was carted off to the police station along with streaker she sat attentively in the corner and looked completely innocent while i was almost arrested just to make matters worse the policeman on desk duty was sergeant smug he lives just up the road from us and he's got three alsatians personally speaking i think half an alsatian is a bit much but three Sergeant Smug rang home and Dad had to come and get us. He wasn't very pleased, and not just because he'd been dragged away from a nice kip on the sofa. Dad caught Sergeant Smug cheating in a golf match last summer, and they have been at war with each other ever since. I explained that it was all an accident. It was Streaker's fault. Sergeant Smug looked at the ceiling and rolled his eyes. Of course, he said heavily. I should have known. The dog did it. The dog stole the handbag. That isn't what I meant, I said, and I tried to explain about the roller skates and being towed and everything. Sergeant Smug started laughing silently. You know, a sort of, ha, 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 do you really expect me to believe that kind of laugh? Dad was getting more and more annoyed at having his time wasted. It's quite obvious that Trevor is telling the truth, Mr Smug, he snapped. He's hardly likely to make up such a story. It was the dog's fault. She's like it all the time. The policeman looked across at Streaker, who was still sitting there angelically. Sergeant Smug, if you don't mind. Not mister, he insisted, and you can hardly blame the poor dog for all this. At that point, the poor dog suddenly came to life. Streaker leaped up, raced across the room, launched herself across the sergeant's desk, scattering everything on it to the four winds, and threw herself cheerfully into Dad's lap, despite the fact that he was standing up. They both fell in a heap on the floor and Streaker proceeded to give Dad's ears a good clean out. What did she do that for? demanded Sergeant Smug. No idea at all, Dad answered from the floor level. I told you she's like this all the time. Sergeant Smug frowned and shook his head. Your dog's loopy. She needs to see a dog psychiatrist. And he let us go home. I won't bore you with all the things Dad said on the way back, but most of them carried threats of instant death. So my first plan had proved spectacularly unsuccessful. Maybe it was time to call in reinforcements. I decided to go and see my best friend, Tina. <laughs>